Hello everyone, Ioni here with Eve's Garden Handmade Soaps. I'm going to be making a soap today. Um, it's nothing fantastic as far as design goes, um, but I thought I'd uh, film it anyway because it's been a little while since I did a video. And um, this is going to be one I think I'm going to love personally. Uh, these are my oils. They are coconut, palm, olive, castor. And I'm going to be super fatting with African shea butter and grapeseed oil. I'm going to be using full goat's milk in this recipe so that it's going to have a silky smooth lather that's going to be wonderful to use. And I'm going to be scenting with uh, essential oils of rosemary and lemon. And I've got those uh, grabbing some benzoin powder and kaolin clay so that they will hold really well. I found that that works wonders for essential oils, especially the citrus, which I'm using lemon. This is going to be a rather dark base because I used uh, extra virgin olive oil. And I'll just talk while I start working here. I'm going to strain my goat's milk, so it's not going to be a real clear uh, soap. It's going to have some uh, solidness to it. But I'm going to be doing, um, oops, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to be doing some colors, um, but not really a swirl. I just want some muted color in the middle. So I'm going to be doing that by adding the color uh, without having a real strong color because I don't want any lines showing or anything like that in the swirl. I just want the, the color there. So it's sort of, oh, kind of mottled looking, I guess you'd call it, but in a pretty way. <laughs> So that's what I'm up to today. Sorry about having to use my uh, right hand there, but say la vie. Oops. Okay, let's get this goat's milk in here. I'm soaping uh, really almost cold. It's about 40, between 45 and 50 degrees. I wanted to keep the goat's milk clo uh, cold, so I cooled down the oils as well, as far as they could go without re-solidifying. So, I just don't want the soap overheating. I don't want glycerin rivers. I don't want separation, and that happens sometimes when you use milks. So I'm going to be keeping this cold. It's probably going to go in the refrigerator to, for its setup time. So I'm going to go ahead and probably fast forward this through the uh, mixing up so that you guys don't have to uh, sit through all of that.
Okay, so now I'm going to be coloring, and this one's, like I said, it's gonna, going to go right along with the uh, kind of the base color, sort of a, but I want a little more green. I want it like a yellow green. So I've mixed up fizzy lemonade and chrome green and some olive oil here. But like I said, I don't want a solid, solid color. I just want a kind of muted looking. So I'm not going to be adding a lot. to these colors. I don't want it gold though, I do want it green. So maybe I should just add some green instead of any more yellow. So hold on, I need to uh, find my green. Be right back. Okay. Now this is just straight chrome green in some olive oil. I'm just going to add a little bit. Since the uh, base itself has so much yellow from the olive oil in it, we don't need so much yellow in here. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Okay, I like that. Can you see it? Okay, so now let me just set this over here a minute. Out of the way. Another color I'm going to put in is neon blue. And like I said, I don't want any um, lines showing up, a distinct color difference, so I'm just going to be very careful with how much of this color I put in here. I want to be able to see the soap through the color. Yeah, that's good. Maybe just a hair more. So I have a distinct color different from the uh, from the soap batter itself. Almost. Now I don't know if you can tell if I show you this, but if you can look through the sides of the container and see how you can kind of just see through it, see through the color without there being a uh, solid color there. That's what I want it to be like. So that will do for that. And then I'm going to do a dark ultramarine blue. Probably have to be a little more careful with this one. Could get too much in really easy. I do want the color to show though. Okay. Now we're getting there. I can still see through it, but I'm looking I can also see some blue showing up. Maybe one more little dab. Okay. And then the last one's going to have some titanium dioxide in it. Oops, sorry. 
hit the camera there. Hope it didn't jiggle it around too much. Let me see. Make sure you can still see. Yep, I guess you can. So, I have to be very careful how much of uh, titanium dioxide I add here because I don't want it white. I want the top white, but I don't want this part exactly white. I just want a little tiny bit. In fact, I think I'm going to squirt some in a cup and then add it, <laughs> add it piecemeal because the force on this sometimes is quite a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit in there. Go a little lighter. That's probably good enough. Almost one more little bit, I guess, would be all right. Okay, guess that'll work. Can I see through it? Yeah, not quite as good as the other colors, but I think it'll be okay. All right, so let me give these a quick stick blend. this now because I want the bottom layer to kind of set up a little bit before I put the top layer on. So let me get the mold. Okay, so can you see that okay? I hope. And I'm just going to pour this in first. I'm not going to save any for the top because I'm going to be putting some rosemary sprigs from my daughter-in-law's rosemary bushes and some lemon zest that I made on the top of this. So this is going to be kind of a natural, just a natural luxurious soap. And I cut these bars extra wide too so they're nice and chunky. So they'll last a long time starting to enjoy that. <laughs> Some air bubbles out there. Okay. Now, I'm just going to pour these down the middle. just kind of swirl it through with the, a spoon handle here. I'll do it two ways so it gets nice and mixed up. Okay, now 
I'm going to put my uh, cocoa line down. Well, first I'm going to pound it down. So can you see kind of what it looks like there? But it's going to have a cocoa line going over it. I'm going to take my gloves off for this though. So don't want to get too much, but I do want to get it even. He's sprinkled. This is always kind of messy to do because it gets all over the top and the paper and but it makes such a beautiful um, design in the soap, I think. It's really pretty. Gives it a oops, I might have got a little too much there. I like to get it right up to the edges too. Okay, I think that's good. Now the cleanup. All that inside. Then I take a, because um, I don't want it on the sides of my soap either. Actually, it's not too bad in there right now. A couple little spots. is the important thing for me for making a cocoa line look really nice is to have it nice and clean okay there's one little spot down there that I want to clean just going to push it down with a knife a little soap, soap in there to push that down too Okay, now I'm going to squirt this with alcohol just to make sure it's completely, uh, there's going to be no separation when I add the top layer. So I use a little 90% uh, alcohol. Okay, so here we go with that. <coughs> okay. my maintenance man's outside. You can probably hear him. <laughs> okay, it looks like my uh, top layer that I put aside here is kind of hardened up. Let me see. Oh, it's okay. It scared me when I looked at it. It looked so solid. Okay, I'm going to add a little titanium dioxide to this part. I might as well use the rest of what I've put in the cup here as much as possible. get the mold back here now I'm going to have to carefully put this on because I don't want to disturb the uh, cocoa line that I put down so let me go get the mold Okay, here we are. Now I'm just going to be spooning this on. 
carefully. Well, as you can see, I got the topping all on, and I've been waiting for it to set up because I'm going to sculpture it just a little bit and then put the uh, lemon zest and the rosemary on. So um, I think it's just about there now. I don't have my gloves on, I know, but I'm not going to be touching this soap. So I'm just going to take a spoon, kind of go on the top here and make some impressions. Okay, so I'm going to put the uh, rosemary on first, I think. Let the zest fall in between. Yeah, my daughter-in-law um, has a couple really beautiful rosemary bushes. They're huge, almost like rosemary, rosemary trees at uh, their organic cranberry farm. That's what my son does part of the time an organic cranberry farmer and the rest of the time he's a carpenter. It will build all kinds of stuff. Houses, garages, decks, roofs. Oh that's pretty. I like that. Okay so now let me get some of the zest I made. I don't have it go all over the place trying to get this cap off. Okay, there we go. So, I'm going to put some of this on too. So, this is just a really down home, all natural, as much as I can get it. Um, I used organic palm and coconut in it, extra virgin olive, the goat's milk. So it's, it should be just a wonderful bar to use, which is what I want. <laughs> so that's what I make my soaps for. Not just pretty, but I really love how they are good to your skin and healthy. Okay, I think that will do it. So let me lift it up and you can see the top here a little closer. And I've been keeping an eye on it. So far it's not heating up, which is good. Otherwise, um, if I feel it start to warm up on the sides here in this wood mold, I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. I might put it in the refrigerator anyway. <laughs> anyway, I will um, unmold this probably tomorrow late and cut it up, and then I'll show you the results. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you viewers and especially your comments and suggestions and it's great to make contact with you all. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.